Hey guys, I hope everybody is doing well out there. In this video, what I wanna do is take a look at a couple of different things on the Amber X device. In this video, we're gonna cover not only how to add multiple drives to, uh, to the Amber X device. We're also gonna talk very quickly about sharing files with people outside of your, your account or outside your network, whatever the case may be, to send somebody a link so that they can access whatever file you send them uh, via that link. So let's jump over to my desktop real quick and take a look at the process of uh, adding multiple drives to our Amber X device. Okay, so here we have our Amber device and it's set up, it's working, it's got its 500 gigs of hard drive uh, available to it. But let's say we run into a situation where uh, we need to add more storage to our device because we're running low, or we just wanna have the, the peace of mind of knowing that we've got more than 500 gigs of storage available on here. If we flip this over to the back, uh, right here we can see that we've got a USB 3 port right there. And what we could do is just very, very simply grab an external hard drive. This is a 960 gig drive. Um, that's got a USB 3 port on it here as well. Uh, this one connects via USB-C on the drive itself, but um, your mileage may vary depending on what kind of a drive you get. Once we plug this in, everything will work just as expected. Uh, we'll be able to index this drive, we'll be able to uh, use this drive very, very simply uh, without any fuss. So now let's say we've reached a situation where now that maybe that drive is getting full or uh, we wanna preemptively add more than one hard drive to our Amber device here. Uh, what we wanna do in that case is actually get ourselves a little USB hub. Now this one, again, we can tell by the blue inside there, that's USB 3. Uh, this is a, a Sabrent four port USB 3 hub. Uh, what's nice about this one is you can turn drives or devices, uh, whatever, however you've got this set up. Uh, you can turn these on and off uh, with the buttons here on the top. Now, one of the problems that you're, you may run into is that uh, devices like this and even USB hubs are meant for uh, keyboards, mice, uh, very low powered devices. And unfortunately, even with solid state being what it is, drives like this take a bit of power. So in order to, uh, to really be able to utilize a multi uh, external device or an external drive situation, uh, what we actually need to do is get ourselves a, a powered USB hub. And you can see right here, this has got a, a plug right here and I've got the cable. So we're just gonna plug that in and give it some power. So now these are all turned off. For the moment, you can tell uh, if I push these buttons, they turn on, of course, one at a time there. So what we wanna do at this point then uh, is actually flip the device over, plug it in. Oops, if I can get that point at the right direction, like so. And now we've got a USB 3 hub uh, plugged in. Of course, I managed to mess that up. There we go. So now we've got our USB 3 hub plugged into our Amber device here. And then what we can do uh, is just take our individual uh, drives. Now, I've got two of these drives. And here you can see I've actually got them numbered. Uh, I like to number my drives so I know what's what when I'm dealing with uh, different uh, devices in, uh, in user interfaces. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go ahead and plug this one in. Uh, to the first port here, that part doesn't really matter. Uh, re what really matters for me in this case is plugging them in and activating them uh, in the order uh, in which the numbers are on the bottom of the drives here. Um, so now that we've got that drive plugged in, uh, we should be able to go over to our desktop here. Here we can see that uh, it automatically added this device. Uh, it's got it mounted, it's gone ahead and uh, uh, register that device. I, I'm not going to unregister it, but uh, this is uh, taking up the space of the one drive that you can have registered and indexed. Um, <clears throat> so that's the first drive plugged in and ready to go. In fact, if we come over here to uh, our Amber IX application uh, that you've got available both for desktop as well as mobile, uh, what we'll do is we'll come back, uh, we'll give this page just a quick refresh here. Uh, and then uh, once this page loads, here we can see we've got our 960 gig, uh, and this is disk one, just like I'd labeled it on the disk itself. Uh, so if we open that up, uh, we can say I've already got a file in there, but uh, let's go ahead and uh, let's grab, uh, I've got a, a PSD file here from some work I was doing, uh, but there it is. It uploaded just very, very quickly. Here we can see that. Uh, so now let's go ahead and add our second drive. So just like we did last time, what we're gonna do is we're going to just plug in our second drive. We're gonna turn on that port if you've got that available to you. And that's all we've got to do on the hardware side of things. There we go. So now we've got, in fact, you can see, even see the partition name here. Uh, now we've got our disk one is connected. Uh, this one's not gonna give us much information, but 
because we know that this is disk one, we know that this is disk two. Uh, so let's now actually go back over to here. Uh, let's come back and let's give this page just a quick refresh. If we go ahead and open this up, we can see we've got our watermark.psd file there. Uh, let's, um, let's grab uh, this chocolate chip cookie. Let's open that up, make sure that we can, we can see that. So that's good. Uh, so we're, we're glad to see that. Let's go ahead and exit out of there. So then let's go back to uh, my Amber X. Let's go to disk two, just to make sure that everything there uh, is still good. And then I've got just a little video file here uh, on my desktop. I'm gonna drag that up there. And again, this is across the network. That was a wired, uh, wired connection, but that uh, 10 megs just uploaded real quickly. Let's go ahead and do, this one's a little bit bigger. That's almost 300 megs. Um, so it's added a, a file to the upload queue. So it's thinking about it in the background and it's gonna move that over there uh, here in just a little bit. There it is. There's that 287 meg file. Uh, both of these uh, drives are now currently available on our drive or on our system. So adding multiple hard drives to your Amber X device is actually really, really simple as we just saw. But the one thing I do wanna mention is that currently uh, you can only have one of those uh, hard drives indexed at a time. So uh, th it is something that they're working on uh, to, to make it uh, easier to index, which is like auto organizing, uh, kind of uh, having the AI built in, uh, kind of figure out what's going on and organize your content uh, in a way that makes sense. With that being said though, you can have multiple drives accessible uh, via the Amber IX application. Uh, again, whether that's on your desktop or on your mobile phone, uh, that's what the process that you would use for the time being to be able to access those additional drives uh, to, uh, to store additional files. Now, one thing I would, I would suggest, I think, is that let's say your 500 gigs is starting to fill up. I would take anything that's not mission critical and move that over to one of your external drives. Uh, so that way you've still got access to it, but uh, all of your more important stuff will be on the main drive and be even easier to access uh, no matter where you are or how you're trying to access that information. The other thing I wanted to cover just real quickly while we're in here taking a look at the Amber interface here is file sharing and how simple it can be. Now, uh, right now we're looking at uh, uh, basically a root directory of all of the, the folders that we've got available to us, you know, whether it's um, the, the backups from my, my Samsung phone or it's, uh, you know, photos that I've uploaded uh, for family pictures that we took or, or it's one of these external hard drives that I've plugged in and configured here, uh, which I can't really say I configured since Amber X is smart enough to really configure a lot of that for me by default. But what we can do while we're in here is actually open up one of these. And if we wanted to share, let's say this, this chocolate chip cookie picture here, all we've got to do is right click and click on share. Now we've got a couple of options here. We can set how long we want this uh, link to be available, whether it's uh, whether we want it to expire, you know, in a day, three days, seven days, 30 days, two years, or never. I'm just gonna say never for the sake of that one. Now, if we know that somebody else has uh, an Amber Cloud ID, uh, you know, username, maybe they've got an Amber Cloud as well, whether it's the Amber X or the Amber Pro, you can put their, uh, their name or their Amber Cloud ID right here and decide how you want them to be able to interact uh, with that file. Or what you can do is click on get a link and then you can just copy this and uh, then you could email it to somebody, but let's do this instead. Let's enter my email address. Let's just go ahead and enter that in there. Uh, we know that we're gonna share this, so I'm just gonna go ahead and click on send. Now, the one thing that I will say about this is that uh, going through the process of uh, clicking on share and uh, entering this in, for some reason does take a few minutes to go through the Amber system and uh, generate an email to the person that you'd like to send this to. So uh, if it's not a mission critical thing, uh, you're gonna send it, let it go overnight or whatever the case may be, definitely uh, you could use that method. But if you wanted to, you could just copy this URL, uh, open up your email uh, like so. Uh, we could just paste this in here like that. <clears throat> and then we'll just say, uh, we'll send this to a different email address and we'll say, uh, this is a cool file to share. And uh, then we'll just go ahead and click on send. So here is the email that I just sent myself. Of course, we've got uh, two different email addresses going on here. So what I wanna do is actually open this in an incognito window to make sure that I'm not logged in. So I'm gonna go ahead and do that. And then it's gonna bring up myamber.cloud uh, with that share link. And uh, right there is the image that we can click, get that image, or we can close this and we can just click download and download the file that way as well.
Okay guys, there you go. There's how to not only add uh, multiple hard drives to your Amber X device, but also share files from them to basically anyone you'd like to share those files with. Uh, it's a very simple process to share, whether you're sending it directly to another Amber user, or you just copy and paste that link into an email and send it to basically whoever you'd like to send it to. Uh, very, very cool process, very easy to use. And you'll notice that through their system, they don't actually have direct access to your Amber device. So well done on the Amber folks for making sure that your, uh, that your data is always as safe and secure as possible.